Hey guys, I'm Nathan Prather, and today on Astronomy 360, I'm going to be going over the parts of binoculars. So, there is the front two lenses, the optical tube, and the eyepiece. So, these front two lenses, they are called the objective lenses. So, whenever you see an Im image through binoculars, like if you're looking at Jupiter, then it will have gone through the objective lenses, bounced off of the prisms, and then gone through the eyepiece where you will have perceived the image. So there are two different types of prisms. There are roof prisms and there are poorer prisms. And there's di there are a lot of differences between them. Um, basically it's just in how their, their inner workings, so they just process light differently, so you'll get a higher quality image with the poorer prisms than roof prisms. So, with light, whenever you see an image, if you're looking at something, it'll have gone from the object through the objective lenses, then it will have uh, bounced off the prisms, been reflected by the prisms, um, and then it will have gone through the eyepiece. So the parts of binoculars, so there's the objective lens, there's the optical tube assemblies, That those are these things, um, and then there are the prisms and the eyepieces. Okay, so in this segment, I'm going to be going over the different types of prisms and binoculars. So as I said, there are poorer prisms, and there are um, roof prisms. There are actually two different types of poorer prisms. There's the standard poorer prism. You have your standard poorer prism, which is, um, which is a system that has offset eyepieces to the objective lenses. So the eyepieces are closer together while the objective lenses are further apart. The reverse poro prism, so it's the opposite of that, you have the reverse poro prism system also has offset eyepieces to objective lenses. Instead, the eyepieces are further apart while the objective lenses are closer together. So poro prisms incorporate an optical path that directs light in a Z or zigzag-like pattern. So light comes in th through the objective lens, is directed through the reflective pore system in a Z pattern with four reflections to bring the image upright and forward to reach your eye. So the wider and set apart objective lenses are actually what helps with creating that stereotypical image where you have a 3D-like rich depth of field. So here are some of the benefits of plural prism binoculars. All internal, all internal surfaces are reflective, there's, so there's no loss of light due to the prism system. Only four reflections in a poro prism system, so it uh, limits further likelihoods of light loss. It provides a 3D-like and rich depth of field. It is all, the poro prisms are also cheaper to manufacture, and so they're lower cost. The roof prisms, you'll see those in the more expensive binoculars because they're higher priced because the prism system is more complex, um, and they're bulkier, and so they're more expensive. Um, also, you can spend the same amount on a mediocre roof prism for binocular, for a higher quality poro prism. So, the poorer prisms are going to be less expensive. The roof prisms, you have a higher starting price to begin with, so you can get a higher quality poorer prism, or you can get a lower quality roof prism. The poorer prisms are also, uh, uh, they're just a better bet because they're, they provide a sharper image. 
the basic image quality of a poro prism will be superior to the comparable roof prism. However, like everything, the poro prisms do have their drawbacks. Poro prism binoculars, binoculars with poro prisms, are more difficult to make weatherproof, um, and they also typically are bigger and bulkier. So, some of the things that you'll want to uh, get poro prism binoculars for. So, poro prism binoculars are good for if you are hunting, if you are bird watching, if you are observing wildlife, still a lot of nature, general nature stuff, uh, and sporting events and hiking. So the roof prisms are prisms that you will usually find in more astronomy geared binoculars, the stargazing and astronomy binoculars. So as for roof prism binoculars, there are a few variations in the roof prism design. So there are the Abe Cohen design, um, there's the schmidt Paken design, and the Amici design. So they all maintain the same basic function, so it's always going to be a roof prism. So they all work to keep light waves entering and exiting the monocular in a straight line. This is why roof prism binoculars have an aligned eyepiece to objective lens construction. So there's the eyepiece or the objective lens, they're in a straight line. Here are the ins and outs of the roof prisms, how they work. So light waves reflect off the roof surfaces within the assembly a total of six times. There are two prisms in a roof prism assembly. The first prism has one surface that has no internal reflective qualities. So, to remedy this, it needs to be applied with a special coating such as a mirror coating in order to raise its ref reflectivity. The second prism has a point where the light reflects off an edge that requires manufacturers to use advanced technology to reduce chromatic aberrations. So that's one of the things where the poro prisms, they're more expensive, but you won't have the, uh, all those chromatic aberrations that you'll have with the roof prisms. So, Poro prisms are definitely going to be your better bet, but they're higher priced. So, some benefits of the roof prisms are they can be optically superior to Poro prisms with quality face corrected and mirror coatings. So, as long as you remedy all those shortcomings, they can be better optically, but Poro prisms are just generally better. They're streamlined and they're more sleek looking. They are also lighter weight and more compact. And they're easier to weatherproof. The drawbacks, they require advanced technology to manufacture, which is why they're more expensive usually. Uh, they require more internal reflections with a higher chance of light loss. So in addition to the different types of prisms in binoculars, you also have different types of glass. So there are two different types of glass in binoculars. There's box 7 and box 4. So I found this can be very confusing. Like, I've been confused by this. What's the difference? So box 7 is a term designated by Scott A.G., a German authority on glass. So it's made of uh, borosilicate, crown glass, and it's high re re highly reflective with a refractive index rate of 1.5168. So usually for binoculars, you'll find box 4 because the average... Um, focal ratio for binoculars is f4 to f5 so box 7 glass you'd need a higher focal ratio so that's the focal length of the eyepiece 
to the magnification, or the, the optical tube to the magnification. So these are some indicators of Box 7 glass. So if you hold your binoculars up to a bright background or light to view the exit pupil, tilt the binoculars on angles in circles in any direction to get a full view of the exit pupil. Identify the squarish clear zone within the center of the exit pupil. You should also be able to notice the shadowy or gray cutoff edges of the exit pupil. So that's one of the areas that box seven really has drawbacks to box four because there's not as much of a reflection area. So you'll see that shady kind of grayish light brown area around the objective lens. Uh, on the inside, so you won't get as full of an image. That's the main drawback. With all this in mind, if you're considering a box seven prism glass, you should shop for one with a larger exit pupil. So that's where the eyepieces are larger. So you'll be able to see more of the image. That helps correct for a lot of the drawbacks. So the benefits of box seven glass, a high reflective index rate, the, it's the most commonly used type of crown glass on binoculars, so you'll pretty much find it anywhere. It's very easy to find. Box 4 glass is harder to make, so it'll be more expensive. The drawbacks of Box 7 glass, there's a squarish exit pupil with gray cutoff edges and a slightly lower refractive rate, index rate, compared to Box 4. So Box 4 essentially has everything that Box 7 does not. I mean, it's just better in pretty much every way. So why is Bach 4 such a good thing? Bach 4 glass, it has a higher refractive index rate, brighter edges on the field of view, so more rich contrast and color and more light can come in, and the pupil shape is circular, so you'll see a full image. However, there are drawbacks. It can increase the overall cost because it's harder to manufacture, and manufacturers don't offer distinctions between Scott Bach 4 and Chinese Bach 4. So Chinese Bach 4, that'll be much um, lower priced and it won't be nearly as good as the Scott Bach 4. Not all Bach 4 glass is made equal. So Bach 7 is good, but because if you're on a budget, but generally, you should try to go to Bach 4 if you can, because it's just better in essentially every way. There's better exit pupils, more rich contrast, much sharper images. You'll get a full image, and it'll be very bright. You'll get a lot of light. You need to uh, pay attention to the lens coatings, because all binoculars will have special coatings to increase contrast. So you need to make sure that um, it's multi-coated, but also it's multi-coated on both sides of the objective lens because you may have multiple coatings on one side of the objective lens and maybe only a single coating or no coating at all on the other side of the lens. So you just need to be careful about that. So those are some things to look out for as in regards to prisms and glass with binoculars. I'm Nathan Prather. This has been Astronomy 360. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.